Hey folks, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be turning the blanks from my last video. These are the manzanita branches and uh, vines that I cast in the last video. Uh, they've been stabilized. I've given them about two, three days to cure. It's three days to cure. And uh, they're ready to use. Now, I'm going to make one of them into a diamond painting pen, which I think I will be doing this one. And this one, I'm going to be turning into an ultra cigar pen. These are really nice kits. They're from Barrio or Breo or I'm not real sure how to actually pronounce that. Uh, hardwoods. This is their satin and chrome kit. And just comes with a little bit nicer clip than your typical cigar pen. And just a little bit nicer hardware. As you can see, the, the nib is uh, just a satin nib, but it goes with these chrome accents, just dresses it up that little bit more, makes for a really nice ink pen. So, we're going to go ahead and set that up, and uh, we'll get turning. These are the tubes, and I can kind of cherry pick a little bit. So I'm thinking I want to go right about here and have that be my center line. So I'll make the mark, and we will cut on my fan saw. Now, one thing always remember it's not too hard on things like uh, hybrids like this but other pattern blanks put a couple marks just so you can line it up make sure any grains or figure even in the resin flows with your pen and you don't put it up together backwards or something like that but, and we're just going to cut it remember to Use all your safety equipment and there we go. But we're going to drill these. And <clears throat> I've heard various people say different things. I drill at a high speed. Um, my drill press is set at 1,500-ish. I think it's 1,450 RPM. And I don't have any problem. I rarely have a blowout. And if I do, it's usually within trimming. So we're going to drill them and... Always start to drill with your middle. That way you can center it up. If you get any wander, at least your middles will line up. up real nice um, a lot of times you won't want to actually drill all the way through your blank so you can always set your depth gauge and you can Little wiggle. 
kind of cleans up the inside of the hole. Yeah. Now this one, for some reason, I got a little bit of warble at the end of my hole. Now that could be because of the uh, the manzanita. Because manzanita is really, really hard. But as you can see, I got a little bit of warble, wobble, drift out of the end of the hole. Now it doesn't go in very far, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and drill all the way through this, and then we will trim that till it's a nice round hole. Happens sometimes when you're doing these harder woods. The drill bit just wanders a little bit as you're starting. Now I'm just going to trim this up right over here. You can see my handy dandy Rikon sander. <sighs> Make short work of it. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna paint the inside. While I do that, I use model paint. Uh, I used to use testers. And testers works just fine, but uh, I go through a lot of it. So these are a lot bigger containers of it. These are like triple what you get. So what you do is take a Q-tip. It loads it up real nice. There we go. And you just paint the tube, paint the hole. You try not, you gotta get it on your fingers too. That's a requirement. Because if you didn't, you're doing it wrong. At least that's what I tell myself. I can't do anything without making a mess. As my wife would tell you. Okay. Get a little fresh paint on there. The other side. And like I said, if you weren't doing acrylic you don't have to do this you don't have to do it with wood and if you use like uh opaque colors you can get away without it but uh i prefer it just peace of mind also it brightens the colors a bit so once you've uh turned it down especially if it gets real thin at one end or the other, uh, the colors will be a little brighter. So I'm going to bake those in my toaster oven at 150 degrees for one hour. And I'll come back and glue the tubes in. Okay, these are baked for an hour and a half. Now they're ready to get tubed. The first things first, take your tubes. These don't come pre-scuffed, so. I don't do pens constantly, the same pen kits all the time. I'm constantly doing different ones. So I don't pre-scuff them. I know some pen makers will sit down and they'll scuff all the tubes to all their pen kits and then put them back in. That's that's just too much, too much work for me. 
takes a couple seconds. Looks like that. That's just a piece of 220. Easy. Now, next step, take your pen, make sure you put the right tube on the right uh, blank, because on the cigar kits, one's a little longer than the other. And this is how I like to glue up. This is just extreme power from Hobby Lobby. Get it in the um, model section. It's the same CA glue as uh, Easy Bond or Stick Fast. Works just fine. I go round and round and round. Take the tube, put the tube in. Little squirt. Spinny, spinny. Push it down a little bit. I take a paper towel. Push the rest of the way in. Wipe off the ends. Then what I like to do is take Q-tip. I just run it around the inside. Both ends. Make sure I get all that extra out of there. Now make sure you're closest to the middle, right there. Then you give it a little squirt. Okay, I went on and chucked in a 10 mil pen mill. And pen mills, a lot of them, if you're not aware, have a little flat spot right there. That can make them wobble like crazy if you don't chuck them in right. So when you're chucking them in, make sure that notch goes in between the jaws. Let's see if you can see that. Right there. Okay, still can't see it. But it is. That way it doesn't wobble and rattle and make all kinds of racket. So, that chucked in. Take our blanks. Easiest to do the closest side first. I always put my, uh, the quill in just a little bit before I start the machine and make sure you have a hold of the chuck or sometimes it can grab a little bit of super glue and chuck it out of your hand now as you can see you just use light pressure because that's a good and sharp one you just want to make it to where that's flush and it shines that brass up a little bit. Now for the other side. See, a little rat, little bit of super glue left on the inside gives it a little bit of ragged cut there. But. Okay, now I've went ahead and installed my mandrel. This is just a standard pen mandrel, nothing fancy. And it's installed on my Laguna lathe. Now for the little thing I do every single time. This is a file or a rasp. This one's actually a rasp. And I take it around the inside of the pen tube. Now this does two things. One, cleans out any super glue that got on the inside of the tube. Now this is a chainsaw file. The other thing this does, scratches up the inside of that shiny brass tube as well as takes away the burr gets created when you mill the ends. So that 
when you put your bushings in, like so, they fit in nice and snug. Now you can go overboard with that, and I have in the past, and then you end up with loose fittings. But the best way to do it is just a little bit. Now, I've already arranged the bushings. Got the smallest one for the tip. These are bushings from uh, Brass, so there's four of them instead of the three that you get from various other companies. Got that backwards. That's why you gotta double check. So, there we go. Center to center. I like to give the end nut a good crank on there. And when you're tightening up your tailstock, you just bring it up to the, the center and you just barely give it any pressure. It's just there to ride and keep this from fluttering. It's not to hold anything in. So, I turn maximum speed. So, put on your face protection. Get your favorite tool, which mine is my homemade carbide. And let's get turning. It's a simple turn. It's just going to be pretty much straight. So we turn it all the way up. Wait for it to come up to speed. There we go. I like to sneak right up on the height of that bush. Since this is going to have a CA finish on it, you want to actually go all the way to your bushing. Don't leave it proud in the slightest, or that CA will be too much and it will uh, give you a ridge on your final pen. Okay, I'll let you guys off the hook for 
watching me sand that. And I took it from 320 all the way through 1,000 grit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a CA finish. I applied my CA finish at about 650 RPM. It's a pretty simple way to go. I prefer the easy bond adhesives. This is my first one. It's a thin, and then I will move on to a medium, and that's it. Activated with stick fast activator. You start out, and I apply with a paper towel, trying to stay off of the bushings, especially with the thin. The thin is just there to fill in the grain and uh, make sure all the dust gets pulled out. And usually it does with that little bit of thin. As you can see, looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna proceed through my grits, or through my coats using medium. I don't put many coats on an ink pen because I don't wanna build too thick of a shell. Uh, but I usually will do about four or five coats. For a diamond painting pen or something else, uh, I tend to do a little bit more coats, but uh, they don't get the uh, hardware like these do. So if you put on too many coats, then you went too far, then your hardware won't fit. Also, if you put on too thick a coat, you can actually pull your finish after you're done. Now after usually three coats, I'll stop and loosen this whole thing up. After I activate it. And I'll stop it. Just loosen the nut. Pull everything loose. Sometimes you glue it to your bushing, and if you do it now, you won't have a problem later. So now that that's done, we'll go back to applying a few more coats. part off before you apply the next layer. Now that should be plenty. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to flatten it using a piece of 1000 grip wet or dry. Wet. Usually I have my water bucket here but my water bucket's frozen so I just wetted it. A little bit of water. Keep it wet, and this will just flatten it out nicely. Now you take a piece of 2000 grit, a little bit of water, polish out the 1000 grit scratches you just put in there. And you can either go to 3000 or you can go into some kind of plastic polish. I'm going to go to 3000 grit. Uh, plastic polishes work just fine. I'm going to go ahead after this. I don't like micro mesh. I end up burning through my finish more often using micro mesh than any other pro process finishing. So what I'm going to show you is some micro magic. And that's a three-step wax. Comes in these little cans like this. And all you do 
first you dry and clean that off and I use one paper towel you don't need a lot just light coating on there turn your speed up about 2,800 RPM because you need to actually melt the wax to really get it to apply that abrasive that's built into the wax. So we do that. And bring down to a clean area. I'm going to buff off any of the extra. Now we're going to go to step two. Fold over to clean area of your paper towel. Same process. Step two is a little bit softer. a long time. Finishes shouldn't take a whole lot of work. If you have to work at your finish too much, you probably need to work on your application. Now we're going to flip it over to the clean spot. All that wax back off. Final stay, step of the polish, polish number three. Same procedure. Little wax. And we'll buff it on there. Now for me, I like an extremely high shine perfect finish if I can get it if I'm doing CA. So I will take this over to my buffing wheel and hit it with the white diamond compound after we're all done. I could have did everything. I could have just skipped all these steps and just went over to my buffing wheel. But not everybody has two lays sitting around so I figured I'd show you what to do if you don't have a buffing wheel. And this comes out just perfect. You don't even need to touch it with a buffer. You don't get much better of a shine than that. Now we'll hit that with the buffer and we will come right back. Okay. Now I don't have a fancy pen press or anything like that. So I use bar clamp. This is my handy dandy little pull out work surface I got. And the instructions will tell you all kinds of different ways to put these together. Some of them will tell you to press this part in first. But I'll tell you the easiest way to assemble a cigar pen. First you put it all together before you even start. Just put your Fitting on there. The clip goes on the insert. Tighten that down. Little washer deal goes right on there. Always put your spring onto your pen refill before you lose it. Because you will drop it and you'll never see it again. So, process. That goes there. That goes there. That goes on like so. And this goes on like so. You got to kind of pick and choose where you want your clip to go. I want this to be more of a feature. So, I'm going to put the clip like that that way it doesn't hide any of the neat figure so this is my assembly tool like i said just a bar clamp for glue ups 
Now you take this piece. And I got a little hole, little piece of wood, a couple different holes drilled in it. Just so I don't damage those threads. Now you can also do the same thing with a socket. You got a socket set handy. But a little piece of wood with a that's a 11 30 seconds hole drilled in it usually works for most everything doesn't take much pressure put the thing together boom assembled no wrinkling of the finish no problems insert your refill Mechanism goes on. Try out the mechanism a few times. Sometimes the mechanisms are a little sticky and you have to work them about 10, 15 times before it actually starts to function correctly. I pick off the little piece of glue on the tip. They don't last that long on my website to dry out. And you take your other part, same thing, real gentle like, that's why I like the screw uh, clamp, you can go at your own speed, doesn't apply too much pressure, assembles like so, grab yourself a blue shop towel, That's what she looks like. Now, for somebody that lives in Northern California, loves California, or just somebody that wants something really unique from this part of the country, I think that'll make a great uh, pen for them. The cigar pens are nice for anybody with a little bit bigger hand. Maybe you got some carpal tunnel in your hands, like I do. So, that's all I got for you. Put some beauty shots at the end. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Do all that YouTube stuff that all the other YouTubers tell you to do. And I will see you in the next video.